right.media. Live from Lucille's Roadhouse, it's the Swasu Coaches Show. Brought to you by ASAP Energy, Anadarko Dozer and Trucking, PSO, Pioneer Cellular, Jet Distributing, CJ Southwest Tire, Butcher's Wine and Spirits, McDonald's of Weatherford, Clinton, and Elk City, Bank First, CK Energy, More Than Medicine, A Plus Roofing, and Weatherford Regional Hospital. Now, let's head out to Lucille's with Stephen McTeer. Good evening once again. Welcome to the Swasu Coaches Show. It's Wednesday night, so we're at Lucille's Roadhouse here in Weatherford. We'll talk a little Swasu football tonight, as well as a little Swasu golf, in addition uh, to talking to some players as well. we got head coach Chet Pobelish with us here, as always, to start the show off. Coach, how are you? Good Great. to see you. Thank, thanks for having me. Good to see you once a week now. You see yes. enough of me yet? Twice this is a week. week three. No, twice a week. Yeah. That's right. You're going to yeah. be sick of me in about four or five nah, weeks. We're good. 2-0. Uh, oh. First time since 2013. Bulldogs have started 2-0. Uh, kind of take us through the win over East Central, 24-21. to 21. I know uh, uh, when we talked to you during the broadcast on Saturday, you were a little Popovich-esque, short <laughs> of words, which is great. I love it. But uh, uh, initial thoughts from you right after that game and right after that win. Well, I, I told the kids, and I said it before, that it was a game that I wanted to win. I mean, I know you want to win them all, but I, I told them I don't care how we win. If we get a W, I'll be happy. And I, I struggled with that because I didn't think we played real well. Uh, we did some things I thought were uncharacteristic of the team we have right now. Um, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm pleased that we found a way to win. We did some things. We had two punts blocked. We, um, you know, that shouldn't have happened. It wasn't the punter's fault. It was two guys not doing what their to coach to do. Um, you know, we, we, we did, did really well on defense, holding them in the red zone a few times, and we found a way to get it with W, and, that, I mean, that's the most important thing. Like you said, you didn't think you played that well. What were some of those negative things that uh, that you thought you guys didn't do very well? Well, I really thought we got a little bit complacent. We went up and we scored 24 points. It was 24 to 7. Um, you know, Jared got hurt, and I, I think kind of took the wind out of us a little bit. You know, anytime you have a, you know, an unexpected 15-minute delay in a football game, you know, I, I wish I would have done something different. But I'll be honest, I was a little bit out of it. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, you go from, you know, what's going on to, to, to trying to get back in the game and get back to the flow of things. It took me a few minutes, so I know it took the kids a few minutes. And, uh, you know, just things, that, you know, we can't do that. <laughs> Yeah, Jared Rayburn, for those that uh, didn't see the game, got hurt. They had to get him stretchered off. But uh, he was up and being Jared Rayburn, I guess, in the hospital, which is uh, loud and yeah, a little he, funny. He was actually on the sidelines for the last yeah. few plays of the game, so that was good. Which is good. So concussion for him. Uh, probably won't see him this week, but I guess next week will be. Yeah, we don't know for sure yet. He's in concussion protocol right now. But, you know, what, what, whatever's best for his safety is what we'll do. Absolutely. Uh, so as you, you know, a couple days removed from the game when you get to practice back on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, what were some things that, that you took from that East Central game and wanted to implement into practice, some things that you wanted to work on? Just us, just everything, um, things that we're continuing to do. we got to continue to get better. we got to continue to be an official, efficient at running the football. Um, I was pleased with, you know, I know it didn't come up with a bunch of yards, but I was pleased with how we ran the football and some mm -hmm. things that we did. Um, some things last year I, don't, I didn't think we could do where we, you know, they knew where we were running it. We weren't hiding it. We said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to move you out of gaps. And I thought we did a good job of that. We're not going to be able to do it all the time, but I thought that was something we were going to be able to do or have to do to win that game, and we did. So um, I was pleased with that. Before we get to Monticello, I know it was parents' day, so there's 4,000-some-odd people there. What's it like playing in front of that kind of crowd well, and that I mean, kind of support? I mean, it was awesome. I, thought, I just thought it was unbelievable. I, I couldn't believe it. And I just they were yelling into the game, supportive. It was it was awesome. And that's why you go to play college football was for crowds like that. And Bulldog Nation showed up in full force. It was great. So Monticello this week, first Arkansas road trip. You know, you guys beat them last year. Track meet. I know there's some records set in that game. With as many new guys as you've got, how much do you take from last year's game and try to implement into this year's game, or, or do you do any of that at all? A little bit, just to see how they defended us, what adjustments they made. You know, you you, you got to look at that. But we're we're a different football team. We're a different offense. We're different on defense. But you have to look at it just for tendencies and, like I said, see the adjustments they made. But like you said, we're we're we've got a bunch of new guys. Uh, more than half our team probably doesn't even realize that we beat them last year. So, you know, we're focused on us, focused on getting better and doing what we need to do to win a game. Same question, I guess, just a little different. They were beaten by Harding last week. They were shut out. <laughs> 
Uh, their stats are so weird when you look at them just based on that game. Do you look at what Harding did and, and no. try to see what they did? or just, no. no, not I at mean, all. you got to look at it as a football coach. You have to make sure you're not missing anything, make sure they didn't do anything that you're not expecting them to do. But, you know, especially on, on defense or, you know, watching Harding's offense, that's not what we do. And yeah. the thing that, that you realize is that people defend Harding differently. So you can't really you – ha you have to look at it. But the stats are going to be skewed because Harding's going to run the ball at, at, at every cost. Um, so, you know, they're, they're going to keep the other team's offense off the field and – you know, good for them. You guys have a chance to do something that Swasu hasn't done as a Division II school, which has moved to, to 3-0. and I know you guys, you're focused on you. You're focused on spotting the ball and get out and playing. But, you know, in the back of your mind, what would it mean to do something that Swasu hasn't done? I, that's, I think 1996 was the first year we went Division II. I mean, that's that's a pretty big deal for you guys. It has to be. It is. Uh, it is as, as a program. But, you know, I told you the first week, we just have to – Trust, trust the process, focus on us, and the wins will come. Yeah. Um, and and I, I know it sounds like coach speak, but I, I really believe that. We have to focus on us, focus on what we're going to do, you know, and we control our own destiny. And we got to get to that point where it's every week. Um, it, but it would be great. It would be great for these guys and this team that would, you know, leave their legacy right now and say that something they've accomplished. They've worked hard to, to do that. But so have other Bulldog teams in the past. But, you know, it's it's the opportunity that's in front of us right now. And, it, you know, it's, it's a good, good, good goal to work for. And, you know, something our kids can have in the back of their mind. But, you know, focus on us and the wins will come. The trips to Arkansas, you know, they're they're not short. They're long. They're not the easiest drives in the world. We'll find that out on Saturday. But uh, how do you guys make those trips? You, I, I know you'll leave Friday. Do you get to practice Friday? You go out to eat Friday? Kind of. What's the protocol for some of those trips? We'll, we'll do a walkthrough on Friday, and then we'll stop and eat. We'll eat dinner. Um, I think we're going to Pizza Ranch. Um, oh, wow. Some of the big guys are excited about that, Ch fried chicken and pizza. Um, but, you know, at that point, it's all mental. I really like the road trips. Um, Division two, I think – I think it's an advantage for the for the away team because you get to sp the, the crowd's not really a factor, mm -hmm. and you get to spend so much more time with your kids with meetings and on the bus, and you just really bond. And I'm really looking forward to that with this team of just bonding with them, you know, on the long trip and and even the trip back. I mean, it's just it's a good experience if you take the right if you have the right attitude and take the right approach. So, you know, we talked about it yesterday. Um, you know, we we could sit here and be real negative and say, "Hey, it was a long bus trip. We're leaving on Friday. We're playing on a grass field. They got a small locker room." And that's the wrong way to go. You know, we're going to be positive and say we we'll look forward to spending time together and getting more mentally prepared. And and that's the truth. And, it, and I think if you really believe that and you really, you know, are concerned about you know really coming together and bonding on that trip, and that's what will happen. And you know, it should have a positive outcome. So. We're going to talk with your offensive coordinator, Tyler Hennis, coming up here in just a bit. But uh, kind of talk about him a little bit and what he's brought to the program. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if I could do it without him. We've been together for – I started coaching him in 2006, and then he came to Delta State and was a graduate assistant there. And then uh, we worked together in southeastern Louisiana. And you know, he's not just a, an assistant. He's, he's family to me. Um, and I, I do want to say this because he's not going to tell you, but that last play on that third down – it was third and th 13 or whatever it was. That mm -hmm. was his call. He said, let's do this. And he got his guys together and said, Kevin, you do this. P Pat, you do this. And, and they executed it. I mean, on his command, he, he ran it. And, you know, I'm proud of him that that he can feel that he, he can give that input at that, that time in the game. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure there's a lot of people or head coaches that would take somebody's, you know, advice when it's the, the play to win the game or, you know, possibly give them a chance to win the game. So Absolutely. I'm proud of him and it worked out. So. Hey, Coach Chet Pobolish with us here on the Coaches Show. Arkansas Monticello, first road trip to Arkansas this year. Six o'clock kick. We'll have a five o'clock pregame on 100.3 Coyote Classic. Coach, appreciate the time as always. Thank you, man. We'll talk with Tyler Hennis, the offensive coordinator, when we come back to Lucille's Roadhouse on the Swasu Coaches Show. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we hire. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. 
Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. Coors Light is cold packaged. For peak refreshment. The world's most refreshing beer, Coors Light. When was the last time you looked at your cellular bill? No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that will help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Well, welcome back to the Swasu Coaches Show. We're now joined in by offensive coordinator Tyler Hennis. Coach, how are you? Good to see you. I'm doing great. Thanks for having us. So, let's go through the positives first. Boy, Tyler Marr comes in, starting quarterback. First time he's been the guy at the start of the year. Uh, he threw a couple interceptions this past week, but, you know, those turnovers are going to come eventually. Mm -hmm. But for you through the first two weeks, how do you evaluate your new starting quarterback? Has he done? I think he's done a great job. What do you think? Yeah, I'd agree. I think he's met every – expectation we, we ex obviously expected of him um, you know the turnovers that he had this past week one was a shot that uh, was probably better than a punt we'd have and then the other turnover uh, he, you know he got his arm got tipped so uh, he's done exactly what we want him to do he's went above that even uh, even his run game has, has shown that you know he can bring something else to the table besides just running the offense and, and doing what we knew he could do but he's thrown even thrown even better than what we thought too one of the things about his game that, that I've noticed the past couple of weeks, offensive line hadn't even a lot of sack yet. And honestly, it doesn't even seem like he's even been rushed, save for when their coverage is good. Mm -hmm. uh, with an offensive line that good, how much easier is it for you as an offensive guy, call him plays and everything, to kind of to kind of figure out how to be more aggressive because you know your quarterback's got time? Well, I think there's two parts to that. I think our O-line is good, um, you know, talent-wise. I think we do a good job in the week preparing – for any kind of pressures or twists or anything up front. And then Tyler Marr does a great job identifying where the pressure's coming and gets our either our protection checked correctly uh, to, you know, to eliminate any of those problems that we might possibly have. Where, you know, I've been places where we don't. We just kind of call a protection and hope it works out. Um, where I think we do a good job in preparation. We're talented up front, and Tyler has got a good vision on – where the pressure's coming to eliminate anything that we need to rush and make sure we get, you know, five receivers out and we're not blocking three guys with five. So yeah. we do a pretty good job there up front and the quarterback. I know the running game, you know, Coach Bobolish has talked about it. He'd like to have, you know, some more yards. There's been a lot of guys that have carried the ball. As far as the amount of guys carrying the ball, is that injury-based, matchup-based? Do you want to kind of narrow it down to get maybe one or two guys, or, or are you happy with what's going on now? I'm excited about what we're doing right now, and it's kind of our philosophy offensively. We want to play a lot of players. We want to give the ball to a lot of different players. I think we got 12 kids with catches, uh, anywhere between seven and nine with ball uh, with carries, um, and that's kind of what we want to do. And if you can play for us, we want to give you the ball. Um, it keeps our legs fresh throughout the season, keeps our legs fresh throughout the game. So when it comes to the fourth quarter, and I don't know, Tristan Houston's only got three or four carries. That's different than if he had 15 or 20. You know, sure. he's not going to be as fresh in the fourth. So, and that just that that's one game. You talk about in week nine, 10, 11. Um, we want to have a lot of guys touch the ball. We want to have a lot of guys contributing. Um, that and that's just falls in line with their offense. We've talked about the positives. So now negatives. Things that. Uh, what's one of those things that stands out that that you really want to focus on and get better at? Uh, I think right now, the one glaring thing is is when we get up. Uh, you know, keeping. You know, Keeping that sense of urgency, keeping our, you know, the foot on the pedal and, and, 
you know, twice we've been up and we've kind of, I don't want to say gotten complacent, but, you know, uh, whether it be as our calling or the players, you know, we've been up 21 nothing, 21-7, and, and we just kind of like let off a little bit. And I want to continue to push forward and and get up 45-7, to seven, you know, and, and in the game then and there instead of trying to hang it around, hang it around, stuff like that. So finishing. You and Coach Poblish have been together for a while. He said, uh, what, like 13 years now? I can't believe you're not tired of him yet. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, you know, I guess kind of talk about the relationship that you guys have because I know he's an offensive guy too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, he even said big third down play against East Central on like third and 13th, that that was you. You you went in, called the play, and told the guys what to do, and they executed. But it, that relationship yeah. with two offensive guys, I, it obviously works pretty well, but kind of take us through how that works like in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess just over anything, you know, over time, trust. Um, you know, nowadays it's more like we think alike. Uh, we've been in the same offense for probably seven, eight years. So, you know, when we start thinking of things, it seems like we think a lot alike. And, you know, we were, we were, we had hit a lot of third and longs and we had kind of exhausted all of our third and long options. And it was just something that we were thinking about and trying to get some kind of a natural pick is what we came up with. And, you know, it was great at the time, worked, great pass, great completion. Um, you know, we didn't really account for the inside backer, which was crazy. Should have, <laughs> could have been a possible pick there, but uh, it wasn't. It worked out great. But, um, you know, over 13 years of him coaching me, we coached together being really good friends. He's actually marrying me and my wife in April next year. So, oh, wow. Um, you know, we're he's Have best friend right there. So, Minister you know, we Polish know each other. now? Yeah, That's you know, terrifying. he's a ordained minister. That is so, absolutely terrifying. It's a yep. certificate from the internet. Yep. Excellent. Very I don't think good. he even paid for it. <laughs> he didn't even pay for it, man. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want that. Yeah. I don't know if I'd be able to. Oh, yeah, my, wife would my, not, my wife would not allow that. She I would can't believe my that. fiance agreed upon it. So. Huh? You got to keep did. her then. Yep. That's why, that's why you got to get married. Coach, thanks for the time. Appreciate absolutely. it. Absolutely. We'll see you in Arkansas. Thank good you. to see you. Take a break. We'll come back with senior junior wide receiver Justin Bailey here on the Swasu Coaches Show. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas in Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. And CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co-op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. 
Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none. And More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Maine and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Welcome back to the Swasu Coaches Show live here at Lucille's Roadhouse in Weatherford. We've got junior wide receiver Justin Bailey with us now. Justin, what's up, man? Good to have you. Thanks for having me. He's a transfer from Tyler Junior College. A lot of good players out of Tyler Junior College uh, have come through the ranks, uh, whether that's basketball, whether that's football. Uh, but you made the transition here to Weatherford. Uh, I guess, how was the transition process for you? Was it hard to get to know the teammates, hard to get to know the system, or was it fairly smooth? Um... It's definitely getting to know a lot of guys. I mean, I've been on different teams before, and they were all welcoming and welcomed me with open arms. But as far as offensively, this is probably the most complex offense I've been a part of. And so it took a little time to adjust during spring when I first got here. But I'm glad I got here in the spring because now, I mean, I got it under my hand. You lead me in right to the next question. Uh, biggest differences between here and what you guys do compared to what you did uh, last year at Tyler? Uh, definitely a lot more diverse. I mean, we have 10, 12, 15 formations, and, and Tyler, it was very, very simplified, and we only ran, like, a certain amount of plays and only in certain formations. So, I mean, we can run one play here and run it in 15 formations. So, I know that, you know, the JUCO game is so different because you've got new guys in and out every single year. You know, for you kind of, you know, I guess, establishing your roots here at Swasu, what made you choose Weatherford? What made you choose Swasu and Coach Henderson, Coach Popolish? I honestly uh, didn't know where I was going to land up, but, uh, I mean, Coach Hennis was very, very persistent. <laughs> and uh, looking back on it, I'm glad he was because this is definitely the spot that I want to be, and I'm glad I made the decision to come up here. Uh, you know, you talk about the diversity of the offense. You fi you finally get that touchdown, finally, because it felt like you were about to break it three or four times in the last couple games. Uh, it, that's got to feel like a monkey off your back a little bit, right? Like you freeze you up a little bit now that you've gotten one. Yeah, I was definitely definitely itching to get in the end zone, but, I mean, I was patient and waiting my turn, waiting my time, and the coaches put me in the right position, and I just made the play after that. You know, again, you talk about how complex the offense is. How quickly did everything mesh between you and Tyler, you and the other receivers? How quickly did it, or did it take a while for you guys to kind of come together and get on the same page with timing and everything? Uh, I mean, that comes with time. It, it helps that uh, I got here in the spring and I didn't just get here right before the season. But, uh, I mean, we work every day, three, two and a half hours every day on timing and then say we don't hit something that we really want to hit at practice, T-Mar will come up to me after practice and say, hey, like, let's work on that specific play. So, I mean, it took some time, but we work on it every day. And You know, it, obviously Jared's going to be out this week. Does that change anything for you in your role at all, or does everything stay the same? Uh, I just look at it the same as any other game. I mean, I'm playing for him. And I'm glad to have him back, and we'll just carry on to next week. Justin Bailey with us here on the Swansu Coaches Show. Thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. We'll Absolutely. see you in Arkansas. Thanks for having me. We'll take a break. We'll come back, and we'll be joined by who is apparently now a Hall of Famer, Swansu Golf Coach Brad Fleetwood. This is the Swansu Coaches Show. Convenient Care got just even more convenience. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one -on -one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care, now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. ASAP General Stores have seven Western Oklahoma locations conveniently located in Weatherford, Clinton, Henson, and Thomas. At ASAP General Stores, you will always find a clean and friendly atmosphere. Hello. Fresh, hot food. Delicious. As well as gas and diesel. 
Use your kickback card and get rewarded for all your purchases from a store you can trust. ASAP General Stores. Stop by any of the seven Western Oklahoma locations in Weatherford, Clinton, Hinton, and Thomas. So, what are you waiting for? Get there ASAP. Here's Jay and Angie Wyatt, owners of Anadarko Dozer and Trucking. We think the cream of the crop is, is all that we hire. It shows not only our safety records, the reports we get from the customers. Even if we don't have a position to fill, if the right applicant walks in the door, we will take the time, we will visit with them, and, and it may be a situation where we weren't looking for that person, but when they walked in the door, you know, they're the right person for us. Apply now at Anadarko Dozer and Trucking on South Main in Elk City or in Hinton, three miles south on 281. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, keeping your energy prices steady and affordable. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. There's a new energy in Oklahoma. Wind and natural gas working together, creating jobs and more money for communities and schools. Clean, affordable, natural gas and wind. Oklahoma's new energy from PSO. time you looked at your cellular bill. No, I mean really looked at your cellular bill. Pioneer has introduced new plans that will help you find the savings on cellular service so you don't pay more than you should. How about this? Pioneer's new family plans offer unbeatable prices on the area's most reliable cellular network. For example, now get three lines with 20 gigabytes of data for just $90 per month. Wow. Stop by a Pioneer store or call us at 1-800-641-2732 to find the savings. Need your oil and filter changed? Take your vehicle to CJ Southwest Tire in Weatherford. There is no appointment needed. Bring your car, truck, or diesel in today. You can wait in the comfort of their smoke-free lounge while experienced technicians change your oil and filter on your vehicle. CJ Southwest Tire on the corner of Maine and Kansas in Weatherford. Your Bridgestone and Firestone dealer. CJ Southwest Tire. See them on Facebook and at cjsouthwesttire.com. Welcome back to the Swansu Coaches Show here at Lucille's Roadhouse in Weatherford. We'll talk about the Hall of Fame story that came out today later, but we've got Swansu golf coach Brad Fleetwood with us. Coach, good to see you. Thanks. You told me two weeks ago when we were in a golf tournament that we won, by the way, that you were not coming on here. <laughs> and now here we are. Very good at apparently following directions from Doug Sell. Yeah, got to do what Doug says. So uh, women's team, let's talk about them first. Uh, you got a lot of new faces this year. You know, Last year's run was obviously magical. What's the transition like for you getting to know the girls, not only, you know, just names, but, but play style, shots they're comfortable with, the way that they play the game, the way that they approach the game. How long does that take? And I'm, I'm assuming there's still work to be done. Yeah, absolutely. And we're still in that process for the most part. Um, we were extremely encouraged from the word from the word go as far as qualifying went, practices went. <clears throat> and so we were, we really liked what we saw. And so we got to the first golf tournament and did not start out the way we wanted to, um, but they followed it up extremely well. So for us to get a fourth place finish in that first golf tournament was really encouraging. And then we go to Northeastern State, didn't play as well as we wanted to, but at the same time, we just we understand right now that we're going to go through some ups and downs, some peaks and valleys with these girls, um, score wise. And you know, our our goal is just to remain competitive as we do that. And so and and they've done that so far. And so. When you've got new players, how do you have the talk with them? Okay, you know, what are you comfortable with? Do you like cutting the ball? Do you like drawing the ball? Your course management, are you aggressive? Are you conservative? And then how do you transition that into coaching and give them suggestions? Because it's such an individualized sport in so many aspects. No, and, and that's what we've actually expressed to them, that this this first semester we're, we're going to observe a lot. Yeah. You know, where that team last year, we spent a lot of time one-on-one -on -one with them on the golf course. We've explained to these girls, we're – we're going to do a little bit more observing this first semester and see what your games are like, what you're comfortable with, um, how you approach the game, how you approach adversity, things like that. And so that way we can move forward in the spring when it's considered our championship season. But 
um, our season is all significant. But um, as we get into the the deeper part of our season, we know how to approach these girls and how to coach them a little bit better. So, you know, you mentioned the the, the first two tournaments of the year, massive improvement from rounds one to two in both tournaments. Is that just due to comfort level, getting out there and, and playing tournament golf? Because I know you have some that aren't from the state, so even just a new country and everything. Is that is that what you attribute that to? You know, honestly, right now I attribute it to just honestly their character. I mean, they're just they're just a really solid group of girls, and um, I think we've been more encouraged by that than anything that we've done all year. Not not their scores, good or bad, but just how they've um, just how how they've taken that adversity in the first round where they've not played well and come back. And um, I, I think that's been the biggest encouragement that we've had all year is that we've got some fighters. They're really proud to be here. They're proud to be some Bulldogs. And um, that's that's just been a cool thing to see um, is how they respond to that. Because we could have gone backwards on both of those rounds and and really put ourselves in a in a pretty bad position early. Yeah. And, and they've, they've responded really well. And so um, – Again, that's probably been the biggest encouragement that we've had all year long. From the girls to the guys, uh, I know you just got back from uh, from the NSU Classic in Muskogee. Um, uh, you got two guys that tie for fifth. We're going to talk to Gregor here in a little bit. But uh, uh, thoughts from that tournament and how good the guys But You had a couple guys just tear the place up. I know Case and Cook shot a, a 64. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that's like. That must be nice. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, was it was it that difficult of a golf course or were the, were the guys just absolutely killing it? You know, it's interesting. That's a golf course that um, I played at Northeastern State, so that was my home course for, for okay. four years. And so I know that golf course really well, and it it never played quite that easy. And so <laughs> I think it just has a lot to that's do with it. That's one of those back-in-my-day yeah, type is. deals. <clears throat> and so it, it's, it's a situation now, I, I think, it's a combination of the talent level at, at Division Two, mm -hmm. as well as equipment and everything else. It's just that golf course has become a more scorable golf course. So we've seen that the last two or three years. Um, but again, for Kaysen to shoot a, a bogey, a bogey free 74, for, for Gregor to go out and not shoot over par yeah. for, for three rounds. And, and one of those was a round where he got four over really quickly and he birdied four of his last five that really kept us in that in that golf tournament, which was, was really big for us. And so for both of those guys to do what they did to finish tied for third and that, and that field and um, that golf course was, was big for us. And so uh, you got, I mean, you, you got so many guys that are back, you know, you've got Gregor back, Kaysen back, Ryan Starks back. I mean, you got a lot of the guys from last year still here. Are you to the, are you to the phase now that you were with the women's team last year with these guys where it's more one-on-one -on -one, let's, let's tighten some things up. Yeah, that's how I feel, and that's and that's really how we've approached this year. Is that our expectations are much higher. Um, these guys have proved last year that they were. I mean, they were within two shots of making it to the national yep. championship last year. I feel like the guys that we've brought in so far, um, freshman wise, we've had two freshmen that have been in the lineup so far, um, and Andrew Strand and Cameron Gallagher. And um, you know, I, our depth has gotten even better than it was in the past and so and then we as you mentioned we bring back that depth or that those returners of Gregor, Kaysen, Heston, Gustavo Taneo who's not been in the lineup yet but still mm -hmm. been a very significant part of our lineup, Ryan Stark, um, all those guys I mean so yeah right now it's it's more about finding the right guys at the right time. Um, our talent is as deep as it's been since maybe since I've been here to be honest with you and so um, so right now, it's just, just finding that right lineup and that right combination to, to get it done. You talk championship season in the spring. That's obviously when you know the, the regional tournament is, conference tournament, that kind of stuff. So, so what's the rest of the fall look like for you guys? So our guys play next week at Shanger Law. Um, <coughs> that's, a big tur that's a big tournament. Um, yeah, no, it's a great Very place, jealous. great spot. Um, and, uh, and it's going to be a good regional event for us. Um, They'll have a week off, and then we'll go to St. Joseph, Missouri, which is a tournament we've typically played in every year. And then we're going to play in the National Preview in St. Louis, or I guess St. Albans, Missouri, um, St. Albans Country Club. Um, and so they've, they've got a good and, – and really that St. Albans tournament has turned into more of a regional event than anything, mm -hmm. more than more so than a national event. So um, so the next three tournaments is going to be extremely significant for them um, as far as win-loss goes in our region. So a couple things that are not sponsor related at all. Story comes out today, Duncan High School Athletics <laughs> Hall of Fame. How big was the check you had to cut for them to let you in there? Well, it couldn't That's have been too question. big because I don't have big checks to cut. So, um, no. Congratulations. That's awesome. I appreciate it. No, that's an extremely, 
As I had mentioned to Doug, it's a humbling honor. Um, you know, I'm, I'm extremely proud to be from Duncan, to be a Duncan Demon. Uh, it was a great town to grow up in. It was a great high school to, um, um, to be an athlete in, to be a student in, and uh, just very proud to be from there. And so for them to honor me with that, um, it's really cool. Yeah. And now in between road trips, uh, Friday morning, uh, you and I have never played in a golf tournament together that we've lost. We're, this is true. We're, we're one and zero. We're one and zero. We're a very short-lived one and zero. <laughs> uh, you've been practicing, I assume, for Friday morning. You played today. First time since we played last. Oh my god! <laughs> Seriously? Busy, busy schedule. I did, I got a busy schedule too. I've been out there <laughs> grinding. Friday morning. Playing another golf tournament, uh, we are substituting Jim Petrie for Representative Harold Wright, who better bring his A game. And it's hard to tell a state legislator, though, nah, to bring his A game. If if it if he doesn't bring it, I'm okay. Well, we got the carry here from the <laughs> Hall of Famer, Coach Brad Fleetwood, with us. Coach, appreciate the time. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Stephen. Appreciate it. We'll take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk with one of his golfers, Gregor Vec, here on the Swasu Coaches Show. When it's time to unwind, pick up a bottle of your favorite stuff at Butcher's Wine and Spirits in Weatherford. All the top brands at the absolute best price. From whiskey, bourbon, gin, and scotch to your favorite craft, import, or domestic beer, Butcher's has you covered. And when it comes to wine, Butcher's has the best selection in town. And don't forget to check out their sale rack with deep discounts. Butcher's Wine and Spirits on Main in Weatherford. Bank First is loyal to the same spirit of industry and ingenuity seen across decades of life in Weatherford. Still a proud stop on Route 66, the vibrant modern reality has the loyalty of local people who run this Bank First, where a rising powerhouse of wind energy joins a renewable source of brain power at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. Families and CK Energy Electric Cooperative, it's the ideal partnership. CK Energy makes every customer an owner of the business. Unlike other electric utilities, CK Energy exists to make sure your needs are always met, not to make a profit. We are locally owned and operated, and we are always there with you, reinvesting in your community. That's why in an electric co-op, the people have the power. Owned by our communities, committed to our members. CK is your energy. On the corner of Custer and Main Street in Weatherford, More Than Medicine stands ready to fill your prescriptions in a fast, friendly, and professional way. They also offer an outstanding selection of gifts for people of all ages. Their Gold Crown Hallmark card selection is second to none, and More Than Medicine is the perfect place for a bridal registry. All this, that's why it's called More Than Medicine. Corner of Main and Custer in Weatherford. They're on call for you 24 hours a day. The weather in western Oklahoma is unpredictable. When you need help, folks have been counting on the expertise of A-plus roofing and construction. Owned and operated by Damon Schultz, a GAF certified contractor. Fully insured with an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau. A-plus roofing always offers free estimates. Call today, 580-772-7587. That's 772-7587. Here before and after the storm. A-plus roofing and construction in Weatherford. Convenient Care got just even more convenient. Weatherford Convenient Care has moved locations. You can now get that convenient one-on-one -on -one personal care at the Weatherford Regional Hospital. Just enter the far west entrance, labeled Main Entrance, and they will get you checked in and on your way to fast, convenient, one-of-a-kind care. Or skip the wait and check in online at weatherfordhospital.com. Weatherford Convenient Care now located inside the Weatherford Regional Hospital at 3701 West Main. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. We're back here at Lucille's Roadhouse in Weatherford. Final segment here, the Swasu Coach is showing this Wednesday night. We've got junior golfer for Swasu, Gregor Beck. Gregor, how are you, man? Good, how are you? Just got back from Muskogee a couple days ago. Uh, tied for fifth individually. Didn't break par in three rounds. I just, like, I don't know. It must feel really, really good. I don't know what that feels like. 
Um, but kind of take us through the tournament, uh, the golf course and everything was, you know, for you to not break par in three rounds, first of all, that's excellent. The golf course for you, how did you go into it and try to attack that place? Mm, so I've known that place for two years now. So we played there my freshman year and my sophomore year. So I've been around and I knew where to hit it and where to where I could be more aggressive with the pins and where I needed to stay a little more def defensive. Um, so I pretty much had a game plan al already before coming there and just tried and played my game and tried the best I could. What's uh, what's one of the strengths of your games? You long off the tee, iron game good, short game. Do you have one thing that, that you're more comfortable with than anything else? I feel like I'm pretty consistent all around. Um, I drive it really solid and I'm not the f longest on the team, but I'll hit it out there and most of the time in the fairway. <laughs> That's why I, I'm never the longest, but I'm usually pretty straight, yeah. which is always a good thing. It's all that matters. <laughs> um, coming into this year, and this is what Coach Fleet and I were talking about, you guys have got so many returners, so many guys back from last year. Uh, how high are the expectations for this group coming so close to going to the national tournament last year? Right, right. I really like our chances, especially with having Kaysen as a senior, also playing really good right now. Heston just had a little slump right now, but he'll be back. And we got a lot of people on the bench who are like just waiting to get out there and compete. So I really, I really like our chances. You know, as you've uh, as you've gone through your career at Swasu, coming over from Germany now to the States, um, I guess first question, you know, if you come from England to the United States, the golf courses are just completely different. You get links, and then you get you know the style of courses we play here in the U.S. Right? Are they any different in Germany than they are here, or are they kind of the same? Mm. I'm very curious now. They're like more Parkland style. Okay. I feel like, but they're pretty similar for sure. That's got to make the transition a little easier, right? Yeah. So. For your game from freshman year to now, what's been the biggest improvement that you've seen? Um, work ethic, I think. Um, just being around the team with the coaches and, and all the other teammates, it's insane how much we keep pushing each other and we like really try to achieve something big here. Um, and I think that's the big, my biggest improvement so far. You know, as you as you go through the season, as you go through the fall, you know, I know. Even Coach said it. Whole season is important, but at springtime when you try to peak at the right time is obviously huge. What are you trying to work on here over the next couple of weeks and the next couple of tournaments? Are there, are there just things you're trying to fine tune, or things you're trying to tighten up, or is it just getting the rounds of tournament golf back in? I think that's a big part. And the issue I kind of had last week in Muskogee was I didn't hit it too close, so I didn't really have a lot of great birdie chances. I did have a lot, but they were just not really. The best ones and so I'm keep trying to work on that and keep trying to hit it closer to the pin it seems like it would make it an easier game i wish <laughs> i could do that uh so i i don't know how often you get to play with coach fleetwood but uh he's gonna have to carry our team on friday morning he's on a golf tournament oh, wow. team yes uh, oh wow that. that's right <laughs> well, he, so he did fine the last time uh we just need him to play a little bit more is really what we need yeah because he doesn't get to play because he's with you guys all the time so yeah, I mean, if we lose i'm gonna i'm gonna blame it on you friday morning <laughs> that's fair uh so you know i know you're just a junior but uh uh, you got any aspirations of playing when you're done in college? I don't know yet. That's, I, it's such a hard road to take. It is. And I feel like so much more takes like comes into that decision. So I'm really not in the right state of mind right now to like make it such a big decision. I think Coach will like that. He wants you focused on the next tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Greg, thanks for coming on, man. appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you. This has been the Swasu Coaches Show. Thanks to all of our guests. Hey, remember, Swasu football Saturday night on 100.3 Coyote Classic from Monticello. We'll have a 5 o'clock pregame, a 6 o'clock kickoff. Go to swasuathletics.com. You can follow all the golfing team, all of the golfing team, the golf team, volleyball, football, soccer, everybody. So, uh, thank again, thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to Gregor for coming on as well. We'll see you all next Wednesday night. This is the Swasu Coaches Show.